In video number one, we talked about the fact that sometimes we turn customers away with our product photography in the fact that we don't help them imagine themselves using the product. Reason number two why we might actually be turning customers away with our product photography is that we aren't putting our products in the best light. And there are some easy, simple things that you can do, even with things in your own home or studio, to improve your lighting situation, and that's a big part of product photography. We need to find natural light whenever possible. This is especially important for DIY product photography because sometimes we don't have expensive lighting setups and flashes and studios to take pictures of our products. And so sometimes just finding a natural light source inside near a window or even outside on a uh, somewhat shady day, not in direct sunlight, would really be great options for you for natural lighting. So look for places in your home or your studio where you can find a near a window or a door or even outside if the weather is cooperating and this will help you to be able to take better product photos. We want to avoid using our flash if at all possible. This is an example of a vintage merry-go-round that I'm using as a sample product photo and you can see that we have some problems here where the flash or the lighting of the flash was very strong right near the front of the product but around in the back we have a lot of darkness and this is not an effective product photo. And so this sometimes happens when people create products and get them ready to sell and it's nighttime and they don't have the opportunity to get near a natural lighting source during the day and they take a quick picture and they think that will be fine but it really is best to wait until you have natural lighting available it's just a, a better overall product photo the flash can distort the look of your product it can cause the textures or the details to be washed out and it can really produce um, an ineffective product photo so stay away from flash when you can here we have an example, just a side-by-side, -side, of a little beaded coin purse. On the left we have a product photo that we used with a flash, and you can see here that we have some grayness in the back, around the back of the product photo. Around the front is nice and white and bright, that's where the light was closest to the beaded coin purse, but in the back it's a little more dim. The picture on the right was used on a somewhat bright day, uh, not direct sunlight, but actually was taken outside without a flash and notice how the lighting is consistent all the way around and we don't have any bright areas near the front and dark areas in the back so we want to avoid that when we can. So this is just a side-by-side -side example so that you can see again the benefits of using natural lighting. Anytime we can boost the natural lighting that we have that's what we want to do. And so sometimes we can use reflectors uh, to bounce more light into our photo setup and I'll bet you probably already have some of these reflectors in your own home. This is an example of just a white piece of typing paper that I folded up and I set beside my vintage mirror go round. This was just very simply done, it did not cost me anything. I already had this paper at home. Of course, you can get larger with this. You can use a foam board or even a project board like your child might use to make a science project or something for school. And so prop that up near your product, especially if there's some shadowing on one side of your product and you want to bring more light into that area you can use just white paper or white foam board to do that notice by the way that I have used um, my setup right here near a window I'm just using a table for my surface and again using some white foam board or paper will be a great reflector also aluminum foil this is something that surely most folks have in their kitchen this can if you angle it correctly can bring some more light into your situation for your photo and so you might try that. It's easily foldable and you can turn it into a little natural reflector for you. Another fun way to do this is to use a hand mirror that, um, and I, I've used this one here, that actually is freestanding and that you can tilt, has a little bit of a swivel situation on this mirror. And so you can easily tilt and bring more natural light, bouncing it into your photo setup. I really like using a mirror like this. If you don't have a freestanding one, you could use an assistant to help you hold it. And of course, if you're using a tripod to take your product photo, then you would have another hand available and then bounce some more light into your setup. So this is a great, easy way to bring more light in with things that you already have at home. 
This is a actually a professional photographer's type of reflector that has white on one side and silver on the other. So I've propped this up here. Notice all the white fabric that I've used here to bring some light into the situation. This is just fabric that's placed on a chair and I've got my mirror around here and of course when I capture the photo I need to be careful not to show the reflector in the background. All I want to see is just the white. But I just wanted to show you this as kind of a behind the scenes photo of a photo set up just near a window. This is done with no professional equipment just something that will bring more white light into the situation. In our next video, in the last video in our series, we'll be talking about the details that customers really want to see about your products. And there's some neat ways that we'll talk about some angling and some things that you can do to show your customers those details. And so stay tuned for video three in our series of ways to avoid turning customers away from your shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon in video three.